Logos. The Logos is an important concept within philosophy, psychology and religion. On one hand it is typically referred to as the Word, an emanation of the Divine, the voice of God and speech itself. On the other hand it represents reason and logic, secondary qualities which could not exist without a syntax, i.e. a language. Human language is a very peculiar and mystical faculty of endless fascination, something which was briefly examined in the previous discourse, Reality. The language systems we have developed over millennia are distinctly more complex than any other species. At the same time, we are coincidentally the most self-aware species on the planet. The relationship between symbolic representation, i.e. human language and art, and subjective consciousness is inescapable. Another parallel that can be drawn here is that both require recursion. How human language came to be is a topic of much speculation. What reason did our ancestors have to develop complex language? Fundamentally, the answer lies in the emergence of our sense of self. The sense of self is nothing less than the big bang of human consciousness at the beginning of time, that I am I. Before that defining moment, human beings would have existed in a timeless state, much like a newborn child. Similarly, an infant has no sense of self, and hence no ego. The construction of the self is a gradual process, both historically and psychologically. Julian Jaynes suggested that historically, subjective consciousness arose as a result of social intervention whereby the physiology of the bicameral, i.e. non-conscious mind, was replaced by a conscious mode of thought. Jaynes proposed that the ancient Greeks experienced auditory hallucinations from the interhemispheric communication between the right hemisphere of the brain and the left hemisphere of the brain, which they perceived as gods telling them what to do. Jaynes' hypothesis remains controversial, but has deep implications. A lack of self invariably leads to an animistic and even solipsistic experience of reality, a world of imagination where gods, angels and aliens and so on exist. Indeed the very quote-unquote hallucinations that schizophrenics and shamans encounter respectively. Nonetheless, we can only assume that the sense of self arose as an evolutionary adaption. Beyond that is nothing short of mysticism. Alan Watts aptly put it that nature is playing a game of hide and seek with itself. Language gives birth to the second aspect of the Logos, reason and logic. Unlike the mythos, which sentimentally looks backwards in time, the Logos is epitomized by modern science pragmatically forging ahead to create something new and achieve greater sophistication and control over the environment. Indeed, Carl Jung visualized the Logos as the masculine principle of rationality in contrast to the feminine intuitive principle, Eros. Whereas for the Greek philosopher Heraclitus, the Logos provided the link between the rational discourse and the world's structure. Heraclitus stressed that man cannot and will never understand the Logos which is always present. Plato's later allegory of the cave echoing a similar predicament. Translated into a more modern metaphor, we might describe this using Alfred Korzybski's famous saying, the map is not the territory. That is, we cannot rationally understand our Dasein, our being in the world. We merely construct a representational model, a simulacrum, based on our observations and experiences. William Burroughs considered the word to be a virus running rampant through human culture, devouring steadily, creating perfect replicas and turning the world into an imitation of itself. After all, ideologies only arise to recreate the lost sense of wholeness within our somatic being. Therefore, we can see that the creative power wrought by the Logos consequently shows man his separation. Just as in the biblical story, Adam and Eve were shown their nakedness after eating at the tree of knowledge. Could our obsession with logocentrism have taken us altogether towards a path of self-destruction? Andy Clark said, Language is like augmented reality, an overlay that changes how we think, reason and see. While Carl Jung said, Man's advance towards the logos was a great achievement, but he must pay for it with a loss of instinct and loss of reality. Language is prior to any technology. Everything humans have ever created ultimately depends upon symbols. The mind arranges words just like children build Lego. Images are substituted by words to form abstract concepts such as freedom and virtue. As soon as something can be named, it instantly becomes impoverished, inert, desacralized, merely an object, an abstraction. No longer seeing ourselves as of the world, we manipulate these fictitious objects as we please. Words are tools, and as such imply that objects can be acted upon. Language has evolved towards an infinite regression of symbols, words defined in terms of each other, a linguistic superstructure, the Tower of Babel. Literacy is exclusively a human sphere of development, 
and as such reinforces an anthropocentric worldview where humans become the centre of the universe. Leonard Schlein suggested that writing subliminally fosters a patriarchal outlook because it is solely the domain of the left hemisphere of the brain. Reading and writing are fundamentally different from speaking and listening, the former requiring linear modes of processing, whereas the latter incorporates non-verbal communication which can provide a greater context to what is being communicated. Today we are witnessing a massive decline in literacy rates across the developed world. What is typically seen as a failure of education and a symptom of social breakdown might at least in some part be a form of rebellion against the one-sided worldview of literacy. Marshall McLuhan said, Schizophrenia may be a necessary consequence of literacy.